Well, good morning, everybody. It is, what, Wednesday. Going to work. My day job. March 31st. Look at this. I got short sleeves on because I live in paradise. This is Arizona where the only time you really have to deal with snow is if you go to the mountains to fucking play in the snow. Or you live there, which is like whatever. I used to live up in the White Mountains. and yeah, It was cold. So I came down to like 3,800 feet elevation where the weather is perfect 360 days a year. And then those other five we just write off as not work days, stay home days, sick days, <laughs> whatever. So how many of you here have heard the expression truth to power? Going to put us some truth to power here. That man is talking truth to power. And then you usually hear an amen, some fucking bullshit. What does that mean, truth to power? Because I was talking to my wife this morning, and we're trying to have somebody, well, the landlord, who is also her partner in that business, which is a kind of a CrossFit-style gym, we have this really expensive locking mechanism on the door that's like, you know, you have a like a keypad, but it's a military-grade keypad. So it's like close to $1,000 for this fucking thing. And, and the door itself is uh, screwed up. It's an aluminum, you know, door, like typical commercial door you'd see. And, and it's all bucked up. And so it sags a little bit, and it puts a lot of stress on the expensive-ass locking system. So, just because he's the business partner, everything has to be gone, you know, cleared through him just as typical, you know, business. You know, it's like, what do you think we should do about this and that? And, and we're like, well, we, you know, we need to get this door fixed because the, the locking mechanism costs more than the door. It's like, you know. It's programmable, and every member has their own code. And it's just pretty damn neat. Very industrial grade. So, because he owns the building as also the landlord, there's some perks with that. Not much, but you know, a little less on rent. And, uh, but he won't. He won't get the door fixed. And my wife's like, "What? What? What the fuck?" And, and we live, you know, on Mars. As I always say, because we live out in the middle, you know, we're like 50 miles from Tucson, which is not the biggest, you know, area in the world. And then like hours from Phoenix. So, you know, it's like living on Mars. So we can't get the door fixed. It's been a year now. And then the members will, you know, call and go, hey, I, I, you know, the door's all fucked up. Can't, it won't lock. It won't unlock. It won't open. It won't, you know, close. It's just because it's all jammed up. And, you know, we live in an area where we got, you know, thousands of these migrant children living in a vision quest right near here because the federal government's too fucking stupid to do their job. And so, you know, it's just a, a liability and a danger. You know, somebody could just go in there, work out for free, steal the monitors or, you know, drop, you know, 500 pounds of weight on them you know, screw it around and, and get hurt. And then we get fucking sued. So, been a year. <laughs> and my wife's like, you know, if I was dealing with this, if I didn't have to deal with the partner, this would have been fixed six, eight months ago. Because they keep going, well, it part didn't come in. It'll be in tomorrow and then we'll fix it the next day. And then three weeks go by. And it's like, what the fuck happened to tomorrow? And I go, that's because people don't, you know, they, they don't want to deal with it, you know, and, and and everybody that knows my wife thinks that she can be kind of a pain in the ass because when she buys something or orders something or expects something to be done because the people we're doing business with don't fucking do it, she gets pissed. 
And so when the freight companies call up and go, well, your carpet didn't get on that, that truck, it's like, oh, was it out drinking last night? Get that fucking carpet here today because tomorrow it's being installed and you promised me. And, and they're like, well, you know, it was just a clerical error. It's like, oh, that's, that's fine. I understand. People make mistakes. Put it on your personal truck and get it to me now. And, and they do because they dropped the ball. And so for that, they don't like it. You know, they're like, oh, your wife can be really hard to deal with. As if that's a bad thing. But see, that's, you know, getting to the truth to power. Nobody wants that type of attitude. Nobody wants to do what they said they would do. Nobody wants to hear what they ask to hear. You know, it's, it's like, you know, people that insist things get done properly are a pain in the ass. People that drill down to the bottom of the, the, the problem we're talking about are a problem. You know, it's just say, you know, people will tell me, Mark, I don't want to know that much information. It's like, well, if we're just going to talk in talking points, then don't ask me why I feel a certain way about a certain thing. Because it, it, it's just, in general, a waste of my fucking time. You know, because I am not, I'm going to go all engineer on this or whatever, and I'm going to go down to the bottom of it. It's like, why is there a problem with this? It's like, because our constitution said this way, and now we don't do it that way for some fucking reason. And then it causes problems like this, this election fraud that we're dealing with over this fucked up election that, well, it wasn't even election, whatever it was. And the people are like, well, you know, it's, it's the mail-in ballots. It's, it's the, the machines that counted all the votes. It's the, you know, it's Sidney Powell saying that. It's Trump wants to have all these recounts when it's, it's just stupid. You know, and nobody, and then when, you know, they're talking about all the superficial bullshit. And then when you go, well, popular vote is not the way the Constitution was set up. You're like, Mark. What do you mean? One man, one vote. And so now you've, you've asked me a question that requires drilling down a little deeper than just the old talking point, one man, one vote. See, now you're, you're like, what do you mean? And so uh, we need to open that Pandora's box and look inside and go, oh, what do you mean we didn't have popular vote? Well, see... Back in the day, we had the Electoral College. Well, that's bullshit. Oh, now what are we going to go get all sophomoric and go talk about that? No, we're talking about this, this one election problem here. Let's stay on topic here. So, you know, it's the Electoral Vote, you know, Electoral College. Well, I don't get it. Okay, well, let me explain that. And, and see, they don't want to hear all that. They just want to know why their vote wasn't counted. And, and what the fuck's going on? And why is Trump being this way? Or why are the Republicans being that way? Or why are the Democrats being this way? Or why is the media doing that? And then all of a sudden, that one simple question becomes like an argument with your wife that now there's 10 questions on the table. And before you can answer the first one, you have to start answering the other one. And then when you do that, now all of a sudden it's like, well, why are you, that's in the past. Why are you bringing that up? It's like you're the one that asked the question. And my response to that was because of something that happened in the past. Oh, please. So truth to power is just a, a, a joke of a statement. You know, unless you have like a really big following and you're really important. And, and then everyone believes everything you say, even if it's bullshit, then they'll go, man, that, that preacher, he's putting truth to power. The fuck he is. You know, he's, he's just saying shit that you all want to hear. And because him and you or her and y'all are on the same page, you get an amen out of it. Truth to power, brother, sister, uh-huh. Shake your head, uh-huh. So, you can't answer the question about this election without going into the electoral college and why we never had popular vote. Because then people are going to want to know about popular vote. 
And why is it, we, we always elected our president? No, the state selected the president. We elect representatives. Well, that doesn't work. Well, no, it doesn't because of the 17th Amendment. Well, what's that, Mark? So see, by the, if, if you're having a conversation with somebody that really wants to know, they will follow you down the rabbit hole, which isn't really a rabbit hole because that has connotations of just like a wild goose chase. But you have to, you have to start untangling the knot from the one end you do have and start working your way through it. And even though there might be an easier way to get that untangled, if you could see the big picture, a lot of times you can't. So you can't just flip it upside down, pull this one strand out of this other one, and the whole rope is now untied. You kind of have to go untying each little knot. And, and then when you're all done, you'll go, oh, well, there was, <laughs> there was an easier way. But you didn't know that, so it's not fair to assume that every, everyone's going to untie the knot that way because you, you don't have all the facts. So there are people that will listen and go, well, Mark, tell me all about this electoral college thing. And, and during the journey, when you're talking history and facts and quoting the Constitution, they're going, well, I don't, I don't understand why they did that. It's like, well, fuck, I wasn't around 240 years ago either. But if you want to read the Federalist Papers, you will understand that. But let's take it at face value right now that this is the way it was set up. And, the, and these are the, the overlying, easy peasy um, facts of the case, you know. And then you have to kind of look at it like, you know, like a jury in a court case. It's like, well, that's, you know, well, the media says, it's like, well, that's hearsay. Nobody cares. Well, I, I care. What, you don't like CNN? You don't like Fox News? You don't like Newsmax? It's like, no, I'm just saying it's fucking hearsay. They're not bringing up anything, you know, relevant. So why, why the fuck do I care? Well, you know, you're one of those conspiracy nuts. See, and now you're off track again. You're all off in la-la land again, and, and nothing is being solved. So when people talk about truth to power, it just really, it's, it's almost become a punchline, you know, to me. A lot of people think it's really important, you know, but I, I do not. So how do we resolve our problems in America if we can't talk about them and, and, and actually put truth to power, pen to paper, logic to speech? You, you can't because, you know, our talking heads that we've either elected or anointed them as the mainstream media have now learned, you know, the, the, the art of propaganda. And they're paid way, way more money to, to push the argument one way as opposed to the other way. And, and so you're, you're not going to get it anymore. And that's why I say, you, you know, it's, it's yo-yo time. You're on your own. It's just nobody is there to help you and, and those that try to will normally be shot down you know i have a very small following you know there's you faithful folks that listen to my podcasts and and, and watch my videos on bit shoot which is getting quite a bit of traction thank you all for that it's you know definitely more than youtube which you know youtube i have like close to 300 subscribers which isn't a lot but you know to me you know it is I've built that slowly over years. You know, it's not like I did any tricks, you know, to get anything rocking and rolling there. And, and YouTube, you know, I'll, I'll post the video there first to get it, you know, formatted correctly. And then I'll download it and then post it on other places to where it's not as big a file. I even keep that for my own stuff, too. Um, you know, I, I'll get one view. Maybe over a week, you know, because just nobody wants to hear Mark, you know. But uh, you know, I, and then I put it on Brighteon, which is having all kinds of problems with their their platform right now. So I've kind of quit even doing that because I emailed them and said, "Could you just take the the view counts off of my account until you get this all worked out?" Because it really looks bad when I get one view. And, and, and then no one subscribes because it's like, well, obviously no one's listening to it. Because really in business, like if, if, you, if you're driving around, you're like, I wonder if they're open, you know. 
and, and, and then you drive by. But if there's a car or two in the in the parking lot, then boy, everybody fucking shows up. Like, oh, God, they're open. Boom. So it's the same thing with the view counts. You know, if it sets at zero or one or ten for a month, then obviously no one liked whatever he had to say. But on bit shoot, you know, it'll jump 10, 20, 30, you know, increments of, of one, not 10 like on Brighteon. And, and so I'll have 40 some views within a couple hours, some of depending on the title. I mean, it's still kind of based on, you know, how much copy you could, you know, shove up on one little thumbnail and get people to read it and go, I got to listen to that. Even though most thumbnails and, and the text and copy is clickbait nowadays, but yeah, people are that way. So. People, you know, really are not really in tune to listening to deep thought anymore where, you know, Socrates, you know, back in ancient days, you know, Greece and stuff, you know, you walk around with this robe on. Everybody wore a robe, toga or whatever. And he basically got paid by the empire or whoever ran the show to be the philosopher. And he would get up on, you know, in the columns and talk about, you know, philosophy. You know, why people do certain things, how governments are supposed to work and all that. And the people, well, they didn't have HBO, so they would sit there and listen to him and go, that was really interesting. And they'd walk up and go, Socrates, that was great. Thank you. And then they would go back and do their, their life existence, you know, farming or whatever they did back then, herding sheep and stuff. And that was their, their, their Rush Limbaugh of the day. And now we have so much information out there to, to put truth to power would be just and fucking sane. Hard to do because we as a society want to, you know, go do our job, work our asses off. We don't want to do that. Trust me, we're, we're locked into this existence. Not We're not living, we're existing. But anyway... And so we come home and then we do whatever home chores we got to do with the kids or the wife or the spouse, whatever, kind of decompress. And then maybe when things slow down a little bit, let's say all the kids are finally to bed. If you're smart enough, you put them to bed early, like eight o'clock, because not because they need to sleep. It's just like, get the fuck out of here you know, go to bed. And then you, you plop down and you, you watch some news or Maybe you binge watch a couple shows on Netflix and that's it. Your interaction with reality and the system in which we live, the matrix, is very limited. And, and what reprieve we do get from our day-to-day -day lives is, comes to us by Netflix or Hollywood or the news. And, and, and we take in a little bit. You know, it's like taking a sip of water when you need to drink the whole glass. And then you're happy. And you're like, oh, whatever, you know. I drank my water for the day. Uh, never mind that it was poison, but you drank it. Well, you get such a small dose that kill you. You're almost building up an immunity to it. So it's very hard as a society, as modern as we are today, not just we in America, but all societies, you know, we, we can't go back to live like the American, you know, Indian did, you know, or... The Aborigines in Australia, it's just, you know, we look at that and go, oh, my God, what a fucking shitty existence. But see, we don't factor in like you don't have to live like an American Indian and, and be migratory and, and dig up, you know, little pack rat burrows and steal some of their beans to make your dinner, you know, which the, the, the Indians used to do. Um so you don't have to go to that. But in our society, we can still dial back the bullshit that we have, we absorb every day. You know, what we call our downtime or our decompression. You could, you could come home from all the work you have to do. You could dial that back a little bit. Maybe not push for that promotion and not worry about that. Maybe don't worry about having, you know, a car for you and a car for your spouse and then the project car in the garage that you'll never fix, but you have to have a fucking project, but you don't have any time to work on it. And, and, and college fund for all the kids, because really college is a, is a waste of time nowadays. It used to be worthwhile, but now there's more money in the trades because 
nobody knows how to build a fucking house anymore. They, we got a lot of PhDs working at Starbucks, though. So you could literally look at your life and dial it back to a comfortable level to where you're not subsistence living, like off-grid, you know, plowing your fields with your fucking fingers because you can't even get a tractor, like way back in the day, you know. Or you, you work and you make a decent income and you've dialed back your expenses to where you're not keeping up with the Joneses or the, the, the fucking crazies. You're just, you're happy. You've got a nice house, you pay it off. And you do, you dial it back. And then instead of coming home from the end of the day, you know, and, and plopping down in front of the, the TV and watching Netflix or the news, maybe you read a book. You know, I find it comfortable to just research shit on Google and, and, and YouTube and watch videos on how to, how to build, you know, we're adding on now to, you know, to what our addition we're putting on the back porch. And, and I'm not really good at setting peers and, columns and all that because I always get the math all fucked up and so I watch some videos and I go okay this is what a, you know the, the the top surface you know is 28 inches from the concrete pad that the bricks are set on and the bricks are 8 inch 8 inch and then 2 by 6 and a 2 by 6 and whatever and there we go um, you know I, I, I like reading that and learning it and, and looking at pictures and trying to figure out, okay, I get the math, why that has to be that way. I understand, you know. And then I go out and buy a, a, a laser level. And it's like, you know, not like a $700 Bosch laser level, but just a laser level that's self-leveling. And then I can, I can do my math now, see. Um, I find that enjoyable. Now, you know, we do, we, being me and my wife, do sit down quite a bit and watch you know, some Netflix shows like, you know, we watched all of Arrow and then we watched Ozark and then we watched, you know, Longmire and, and fucking Blacklist. And, you know, eventually they're over because you binge the fuck out of them and then it's like, damn it. And and so now we're watching Lucifer, which is funny. I mean, you know, it's, it's it, they take a lot of literary license when they talk about religion and Lucifer and, and angels and demons. But, yeah, you know, who the fuck cares, you know? No different than the Da Vinci Code, you know, they, they fix a subject and then they go way the fuck off in La La Land. You know, Knights Templar are still alive somewhere. So, you know, you have to take it with a grain of salt, but it's humorous, you know, and it does kind of make you think, you know, well, what I've read and studied about religion, you know, all through my life, this doesn't set right. But, you, you know, it's not like you're going to go out and join the Church of Satan. You're just... It's just funny. He's a nightclub owner and he's kind of self-absorbed, arrogant dick. And, you know, I, I laugh at it and say, well, you know, they're, they're really kind of like amateur because you know, <laughs> Lucifer and, you know, all these guys have been around for millennia and, and they're still like trying to figure shit out. It's like, you know, whatever. But it, it's cute. And, you know, so I, I, you know, I watch that. But, you know, when I have time, time, when my wife doesn't need to decompress from the stress levels, you know, of our day job, our business, you know, I can just, you know, make a podcast like driving to work here. See, I could be listening to music right now. I got 30, 40 minutes of just drive time. I could be listening to music, which I've heard all the fucking songs a hundred times yesterday, you know, or... I could listen to an audio book written by somebody else about other things. And, and if it's not a good novel that really drags my head off into somewhere where I get really have to see what's going on. And then I'm analyzing the fuck out of it anyway. Um, I could do this, you know, instead. And, and that's why I call this therapy for me. You know, it, it's like something triggered me this morning to talk about, you know, truth to power. And, and to then to analyze why it is that people don't really want to hear it. <laughs> don't fucking care. Because we've bought into this skin in the game bullshit construct of the matrix that we live in that tells us you get up, you, you feed your 2.3 children and the dog, 
you go to work and you work and you work and you work and you work and, and then you you get your paycheck and of course out of that comes taxes so you got to work a little harder or make a little more so you got some more discretionary income and then you pay your your house payment or your rent and your electric and your cable and all the stuff that we need to just be in that world of existence like you need a cell phone really nowadays to even get a fucking job you know because they want to get a hold of you and tell you what to do 24 7 track you so there's all those bills that we have and 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 the, the construct is set up to where you have very little free time. And, and then just you spend that free time trying to figure out why the rest of your time is being controlled by manipulated fuckweeds called politicians. And, and, then, and then there's both sides of that argument. You know, the Republicans are bad. The Democrats are bad. I hate them. I hate those. And then they throw in, you know, division, you know. Well... You know, they want white people to not like black people anymore. So they, they take these heinous stories and they, they make it like, you know, one in, you know, a hundred cities, you know, has this problem. And then I'm supposed to hate my black friend who I don't hate him, you know, and he's supposed to hate me because I'm racist and I'm not and he don't hate me. But they want to drive a wedge into that. For some sick, twisted fucking reason. I, maybe because they're just sociopaths that get an erection of seeing people not like each other. But if I choose not to play that game, then I'm fine. You know, a lot of my, you know, military friends and stuff, you know, I, I don't have a problem with them. My Border Patrol friends, even though do I think the Border Patrol as a whole is dropping the ball? Yeah. And, and is there anything they can do about it? Well, no, because, you know, my friends have kids and wives and bills and they're caught up in the matrix and so they can't stand up against Washington and go you know if, if we just like watched them jump over the border and then just told them go back motherfucker or we're arresting you the guys behind me are sheriffs they're just going to arrest you for breaking that one law and then we'll let the judge decide you know what the fine and penalties are and oh by the way they're going to deport you back home because you entered our country illegally you know, no, they won't do that because their hands are tied. So, you know, they're good people. I choose not to be mad at them, even though some of them get mad at me for some of the stuff I say, because they're still people. They're caught into the matrix also. And, and, and we, we tend to gravitate toward what's most important to us when, when you're young and you got, you know, a family and bills and all this stuff. You really can't take the high road sometimes. And and so you're kind of stuck there. And, and, you know, a lot of them will, you know, tell me, no, Mark, that's not true. A lot of my black friends will go, well, no, they're really, as a majority of, of blacks in America, 90%, which is probably low, you know, don't give a flying rat's fuck about racism. And it's probably even 95 or 100 percent, except that that few radical groups that, you know, the media spend a lot of time on it. It's like, is Coke better than Pepsi? I really don't know, right? But they'll spend a fortune telling you one's better than the other, and we tend to believe that. So if they're if they spend a fortune taking this one two percent of, of blacks saying that they hate whites, and then they find another one two percent of whites that hate blacks. They will shove that down our throat until we think it's actually true. So to put truth to power, you have to look at it from more of a, a smaller level. Like, who do you know? I mean, I went to school with predominantly blacks and Mexicans. Had no problem with them. And they had no problem with me. Other than the typical problems like, you know, why are you looking at my girlfriend, dude? It's like, oh, because she's fucking hot. I'll kick your ass. It's like, why? Because you have a hot girlfriend? So it's just a minor bullshit. Whether they were black or white, I had some black friends in high school that uh, wouldn't let me go out with one of their, uh, their, their sisters, as they call it, because blacks and whites shouldn't date back then. That was back in the early 70s. And that was cool. They were, they were very cool about it. They're like, right, Mark, we like buying pot from you. You're really a great guy, but uh, don't do that. It's not cool. It's like, okay, whatever, that's fine. You know, it's not like we were like Romeo and Juliet and had to go get married. But, you know, it was, 
That was, that was just normal fucking problems. But there was no racism. It wasn't like, Mark, because you ask her on a date, we're going to kill you because you're whitey. And we hate you. No, it's just like, it was like normal people which, with blinders on or even like a, a mask, like if we were all black backed and didn't know what the fuck was going on. And they're like, Mark, we don't want you, you know, dating our sister. I'd go, oh, she your sister? Because I wouldn't know that they're black, see. And it's like, no, no, no. Um, we just don't want you going out with her because, you know, in case you hadn't noticed, you're white and we're black. And it's like, no, I didn't notice because I have this bag over my head. And, and and so do you. So how do you know? And it's like, I don't know. If people told me I'm black. I really don't know either. So was, we were just having conversations in, in life back then. And if there were riots and gang wars or whatever we called them, it was really because somebody was selling drugs in somebody else's turf, you know. Had nothing to do with skin color. Trust me, it was just like you're cutting into my fucking bottom line and my margins, you know. And even in high school, I knew all that shit, you know. So we buy into this, and then, and yet when they when they say let's get some truth to power, there is no truth, and therefore there can be no power, and you can't talk about it if you're one of those. Those people that really understand the Bible because you've studied it your whole life and you, you've filtered it down to what is for you true. They will tell you, well, you don't talk about religion and politics. It's like, really? Because that's kind of what the world revolves around right now. You know, why are we here and what the fuck happens when we die? Hence, religion. And then while we're here, what's going to, you know, fuck my life and take away my freedom and liberty? Hence, politics. Oh, don't talk about that. Don't, don't, don't go there. It's like, really, what am I supposed to talk about? The motherfucking weather? Because I can't talk about that either because I would be a, considered a flat earther or a, a tree hugger. <laughs> you know, whatever. So, all in all, there is no truth to power. Not because it doesn't exist, but because no one will step out on that branch and test the theory and talk about politics or talk about religion. And, and then the minute you do on a, on, a, on a platform, then you can be deplatformed or called, you know, fake news or whatever. And if you're just a, a normal person, you and I talking and, you know, I'm white and you're black, say, uh, we come to the agreement, shake hands, and we're fucking happy. It's like, you know, our kids play together, go to school together. We're going to go camping together. It's like we, the American people, don't give a flying fuck about color or income inequality or whatever. You know, I had a friend of mine that was in the military, great guy, you know, just military intelligence, really high ranking, going for being a general. And uh, he made way more money than I did. And we just got along great, and we would talk about shit. And, and when I'd talk about politics, he's like, well, I really can't tell you about that because then I'd have to kill you. Literally, my security clearance is that fucking high. But he goes, you know, you're, you're on to something. Keep looking. And, and we just, we really bonded well. I'd met him, you know, major in their house. And, and we just bonded. We kind of clicked, kind of like simpatico. And, and, and when they moved, I was really bummed out and sad. Now, do we keep in touch, like, you know, that no but we're typical guys like if he came back i'd be like hey how are you and it would be like we just left our each other's presence like a, a day ago wouldn't be like well i didn't hear from you two fucking years it's like well no i know i haven't heard from you for two fucking years because you're you're working at the pentagon trying to become a general which is awesome how's that fucking going see so when, you, when you're talking to people one-on-one -on -one, you're not moving the needle but in your, your level of your soul, and you're happy. You're like everything. And then when they say there's massive racism, you look around and go, not in the world in which I live. And most blacks and Mexicans and Asians that I've spoken to, this is a heavily, you know, Vietnam, Asian culture here where, where I work because a lot of the soldiers, you know, married Vietnam girlfriends or... Taiwan, whatever, you know, so you meet that real slice of culture and there's nobody gives two fucking shakes of a stick about any of that. 
It's like, hey, how are you? And it's like, whoa, what did I smell it? Now oh, kimchi. It's like, wow, it smells like ass. You're like, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a delicatessen, just like you know, you Americans will eat this or Mexicans eat menudo, and it's like, yeah, that too smells like ass, you know. But there's no, ha huh, ha, huh, whatever, you know, you racist white buck, you know. No, nobody cares. So the only time there's not, you know, when there should be truth to power would be like a podcast like this, or you do a video, or you, you, you're talking to a group, you know, then you'll be marginalized and shut down if, if you say anything that falls outside of the narrative of what they, whoever they are, want us, whoever we are, to believe. And so if, if you're trying to find truth to power, you probably already know it. You have friends that are different colors, different nationalities, different religions, different education and income levels. And, and, and they're your friend. If they called you at two in the morning and said, hey, my piece of shit truck broke down. You go, oh, that fucking thing, it's amazing, it's still working. You know, can you come and give me a hand? It's like, sure. You know, I'll, I'll be there as soon as I can. That's, that's the human existence. That's how we are as people. We, we love those that we love. And we don't care about color and all that bullshit. So when you step outside that box and you, you move up to another level to where you're talking to a group, then you run into that. And that's only because that's what they've been told. Just like your friend that you would do anything for that's black, white, brown, yellow, low income, high income, high education, low education, the same for them. They hear all this stuff, but when they interact with you, they so don't care because they know it's bullshit. They know you're one of the good guys and you're their friend and they don't even analyze it that way. Like, is he a good guy or a bad guy? Maybe that snap judgment was made the first time they met you, but for now, they don't care. But you put them all in a group and you start talking, then their, their, their reasoning clicks up to a different notch. And it's like, well, that's weird because what you're telling me I've heard is not that way. And so then they're starting to go down that rabbit hole again and going, well, wait a minute, what are you saying? And it's like, I'm saying the same thing I have always said. But now it's being interpreted or seen by a group, you know, group think. And, and, you know, they can tell you all day long and tell hell freezes over that, uh, that there's not a, a herd mentality, but there is, you know, so you put a hundred people in a room that are all people you've met and talked to over the years, they will act a hundred percent different than they did when you were at their house talking to them or at a barbecue. And, and so, The original thought was like, nobody wants to go down that rabbit hole. And maybe we really don't want to go that deep into the, into the void. You know, I do it because it's fun for me. And my friends will sit there and listen to me go down that rabbit hole. And, and even if I've said it before, they know that their 10 cent, 10 percent new information has been added because they know I study constantly. And they'll go, well, yeah, you talked about that. Yeah. And they will go off on what they're passionate about. And I will listen and I will laugh and it will be fun. But most in general people have their own groups and their own ways of dealing with knowledge and information. And you don't want to fuck with that balance as an individual one-on-one. -on -one. But when we're talking about our country, you know, somebody asked a, a little, made a post, I guess it was kind of like a question about the divided military. And I think it was Glenn Tate. And, and I said, well, I think it's already divided. You know, most soldiers love them to death, know a ton of them here in, you know, in this area. Um, will follow their leaders through the gates of hell and, and die fighting for whatever. But, they don't understand their oath that they took. They understand they took an oath 
and they understand what they were told it means. But they've never really read the Constitution and the importance of that oath and how old an oath is, because oaths like for sheriffs and, and stuff go back seven, eight hundred years. These are just fucking words on paper. And you took that oath, it meant something. And, and it does for military. So when you're going to support and uphold the Constitution, what does that mean? And when you start talking to them about, you know, commander-in-chief and declarations of war and standing armies, they tend to get a little upset because they've taken it all, uh, you know, at face value. I'm upholding the Constitution. Which Constitution? Well, you know, they'll just away the U.S. Constitution, but they, they don't really know what it means. It's been changed and bastardized. And I'm not saying that the amendments that have been added are constitutional. And we, the people, allowed those to be added. But when the courts make laws and the soldiers are going to uphold the Constitution by following those laws, then they're not honoring their oath and upholding the Constitution. So it gets into this massive, big thing I was talking about to where now you're going down this, this maze trying to figure out the, the truth of something. And rather than go, you know, I'm going to look into that, they just go, I don't want to hear it. And so it's, it's, it, it's all shut down. You know, America does not need standing armies. And you'll get into the argument with people. It's like, well, yeah, but our enemies are close now. They can reach out and touch us easy. It's like, yeah, but good. We had militias. And militias were state-run armies, basically, organized militias that could defend the border of that state against even other states. Like, you know, our borders, uh, New Mexico and, and Colorado and, you know, the four corners there and California and Mexico. We, we could have militias that, and, and National Guard that would protect that if it came to that. And then the United States Army could amass a group and, and make a standing army in a time of actual war war. But the rest of the time, it was just like, seal your borders and don't let shit get fucking out of hand. And if China decides to invade us or, or Mexico or whatever, we'll, we'll amass an army like that post haste. We got them all on standby and we'll do it. But, you know, there weren't supposed to be standing armies. And you can sit there and go, yeah, but now... Well, no, no, there is no yeah, but now. You know, it's, it's it's the same as it was then. You know, not yeah, but. You know, so when it comes to truth to power, the truth and the power are, are synonymous. And you're not going to get to it if you're not willing to turn over rocks and look at things that are uncomfortable and go, you know, yeah, my oath to defend the Constitution meant the original Constitution as written and the constitutionally added amendments, and that's all. And, and any law that was added that flies in the face of constitutional reality and law is void, and I will not uphold it. Sheriffs that say they up, they're oath keepers, federal agents that say they're oath keepers, they're, they're, they're following laws that are not constitutional and therefore they are not oath keepers. And, and so to get there is, is a hard road. And, and, and I've talked about this so many times before in the past, but the reality is we are so close to problems. I mean, horrible problems in this country. And I'm not talking about racism and income inequality because I, I, I think it's something typed up and talked about. But the average person, like I said, doesn't really care you know they will help you when asked but the problems at our border it's a straight up fucking invasion it's you know if if it had happened 600 years ago some king would be building a wall and, and getting all his troops together in his keep and killing them all. It's like, where, where the fuck are all these people coming from? Well, they just need a job and something to eat. It's like, well, good, go fucking build your own goddamn castle. So we are really, really, really close to the edge of something really dark and deep. And we're not being shown what it is. And so you have to, you have to do the uncomfortable things now and, and look at what is truth 
and where is the power and what do we do about it? Because America politically, financially, morally, and everything that could be really important is really close to, to collapse. Our financial system is, is just on the verge of collapse. And the only reason it hasn't is because there's a lot of smart people propping it all up. Our borders are collapsing. And there's a lot of smart people maybe kind of keeping it together, but they're losing the battle. Politically, we've been sold out. There are no, there's no two-party system. There's, there's just whoever's in charge and we are not it. So it's time to start uncovering things and looking. Flipping over those rocks and going, what the fuck is that? Questioning your, your oath. And going, I took an oath and I believe in it. And I'm strong-hearted about that. I believe that oath to uphold the Constitution. What does it mean? And how am I going to honor that oath and uphold that oath if I'm going to allow the others to lie to me? How am I going to be a good Christian if I don't even understand what the fuck that means? So it's uncomfortable. It's going to get dirty. We will not pass the test. Because, you know, speaking of religion, it's time. The second coming is coming. And all those things are going to happen regardless of whether we like it or not, whether we've been good or not. The time is over. And there will be a reset. And that's God's plan. Not yours, not mine, not the politicians, not the militaries, not our enemies or our friends, our allies. That's just fucking God's plan. It's like I have a plan. It's an eight, there's 7,000 year plan. And then on Monday we will rest and we're pretty damn close to Monday. It's, uh, you know, it's actually... 12 midnight, but I might be waiting for sunrise. So you got a few more hours there before it's over. It's fucking over. It's not, you know, and you can read the prophecies until you're blue in the face. But the reality is whatever it means and whatever was written way back then doesn't mean shit. Because his plan is his plan. And you can't change it any more than you can change being born. It was part of the plan. We were born. Our spirit was stuffed in a body and we were born. And you can figure it out all the fuck you want. But it happens. And, and maybe we volunteered for it, you know, millennial ago. But right here where we are now, if his plan says on this date, he's going to show up, reappear, and there'll be a rapture or a Satan will be loosed and there'll be tribulations and people will be killed and all the enemies of God will be destroyed with fucking nuclear bombs or whatever. That's what's going to happen. Not going to change it. It's not going to happen. It's just boom. Time to go, everybody. Get on the bus. We're fucking out of here. So that's my little rant. I got a little off subject, truth to power shit, but whatever. Um, it's all the same. Pay attention. Dig deep. Find out things. Start listening to people that maybe make you uncomfortable and, and start thinking, not studying about all this shit. Think about religion. Think about politics. Think about racism. Think about income inequality and free markets versus socialism. Think. And then draw your own conclusions and, and live your life. Live. Stop existing. I love you all. Take care. Have a great one. Talk to you next week. Well, I'll fucking be talking to y'all every time I get a wild fucking hair up my ass. So anyway, love y'all. Talk to you later. Enjoy the coming apocalypse. We've made too many compromises already. Too many retreats. They invade our space and we fall back. I'm your huckleberry. The line must be drawn here. This far, no further. That's just my game.